Bats. The very name fills the imagination with fear and dread. But these peaceful creatures play an important role in our environment and our economy by preying on insects that destroy cash crops, by keeping mosquito populations in check, and by helping to pollinate trees. Now, bats are threatened by a mysterious disease that's marching across the United States. As bat populations rapidly decrease, a coordinated national response has risen to fight the disease. And the front line of the battle is in the state of Michigan. In a laboratory at Western Michigan University, Dr. Martin Vonhoff is working to stop the spread of a plague. Dr. Vonhoff isn't a physician, he's an evolutionary biologist, and his patients are a little unusual. We have bats that we are artificially hibernating uh, in our lab. These bats have been exposed to the fungus that causes white-nose syndrome. White-nose syndrome is a disease caused by a fungus, a fungus that thrives in cool, humid environments, like in the very places some species of bats love to hibernate. White nose syndrome was first discovered in 2006 near Albany, New York, and since its discovery, it spread to 25 states and five Canadian provinces. It's of great concern. Millions of bats have died. The last estimate was over six million bats have died here in North America, and this has very important consequences for the long-term health of bat populations and, you know, subsequently then, because bats interact with other organisms, uh, you know, long-term impacts for the health of our environment. Ground zero for battling the disease is now Michigan, as the threat rapidly spreads westward. Dr. Alan Curta and his team from Eastern Michigan University are leading a coalition of biologists, researchers, and experts from around the country. They're guiding fellow bat specialists to the remote regions of Michigan in a frantic search for a method to slow down, if not eradicate, the fungus. Pretty much since about 2008, we've been looking for the presence of the disease. We did not find any evidence until 2014. Just this spring, Curta and his colleagues found signs of the fungus here at Tippy Dam in northwest Michigan, making it a newly infected site. The fungus that causes white nose syndrome is insidious. It cannot infect humans, house pets, or livestock, but it kills nearly every bat it infects. The fungus attacks the exposed skin on their noses, ears, and wings. Irritated by the fungus growing into their skin, the bats arouse from hibernation, and then their problems really begin. No hibernating animal hibernates the entire winter through. They arouse periodically. Doing that costs a large amount of energy, and the only energy they have is what uh, fat they stored during the autumn. Infected bats are using up their fat much more frequently and in infected areas, the bats are running out come February, come March, and there's still a lot of snow on the ground, there are no flying insects, so there is no food. The bats are dying of starvation and other complications. Joseph Hoyt, a graduate student at the University of California, Santa Cruz, is braving a Great Lakes winter as part of the Michigan-led coalition. In the abandoned copper and iron mines of Michigan's remote Upper Peninsula, Hoyt is spearheading a novel study to determine how different species of bats might spread white nose syndrome between each other. We're studying the contact patterns of bats, um, and the way that we do this is by using a fluorescent uh, traceable dust. The dust is applied to the bats at the beginning of hibernation. We then return at the end of hibernation, and we can trace that dust um, through the colonies of bats. As we kind of move into the western uh, U.S., I think as much information on which species are kind of important, uh, playing important roles in, in transmitting uh, white nose syndrome will be uh, helpful in determining kind of where future management will happen and, and definitely deploying um, future control agents. And that brings us back to Dr. Von Hoff. Can we control white nose syndrome? I, th I think, you know, that for us is the holy grail for anybody interested in the conservation of bats. White nose syndrome was first discovered nine years ago, but no progress has been made in slowing down the disease or limiting its effect. So Von Hoff has turned to an unlikely and natural source of inspiration. Chitazan occurs naturally in the hard bodies, the exoskeletons of arthropods, and that includes insects and it includes crustaceans such as shrimp and crabs and lobster. It's completely biodegradable, biocompatible. It also has a very important function in wound healing. We know from our own lab tests that if we grow 
the fungus that causes white nose syndrome in a plate that contains chitazan, we almost completely inhibit its germination. And if it has already germinated, we inhibit it, its growth by uh, approximately 84%. Although chitosan has been shown to be effective in the lab, trying it on bats in the field is still some time off. Regardless of when field trials begin, the fight against white nose syndrome isn't just professional for these researchers, it's personal. Within the next three to five years, we're going to expect 90% of our hibernating bats to be dead, 250 to 300,000 bats. That's going to be very difficult. Uh, I've spent 35 years with these animals, and uh, um, it, it will be hard um, not to have them around. I guess we've all had to harden our hearts a little bit. You know, as somebody who loves bats, who, who studies bats uh, for his entire career, uh, you know, it's devastating. Absolutely devastating. To learn more about the latest research in the fight against white nose syndrome, visit the link on our website.